It's this thing on. Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Coming, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Welcome back to Big Mouth and welcome to my Joker reactions. Yes, critics and pundits and bloggers are now allowed to have their reactions aired of the Joker movie, and I'm so, so excited. Because after I read you out a selection of these reactions, I'm going to give you my reaction. As you know, I saw a 90-minute test screening of the Joker movie a few months ago. And you know how I'm in love with Whacking Phoenix, Todd Phillips, and this new era of DC films. So first of all, we are going to read out these reactions. I'm Mick Minas. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, at MoviesTVMad. Come over, join me, so we can continue the conversation. So here we go. This is Digital Spy. Yes, um, I don't normally go on this site, but hey, it's the first one I found. Whacking Phoenix is Joker film praised as a dark and twisted masterpiece by critics as first reactions land. It's time to send in the clowns. Everybody, uh, because Joker premiered at Venice um, Veniar this morning, August the 31st. And the first reactions are full of praise for the latest DC movie. Starring Joaquin Phoenix as the iconic DC character, Todd Phillips' Joker is set in the 80s and follows a failed comedian, Arthur Fleck, who turns to a life of crime after bombing with audiences and slowly rises to become a frightening legend. We've already been drawn in by the film's creepy trailers with a, a new full-length trailer dropping earlier this week and giving audiences their first in-depth look at the film, and now it looks like all the trailers were right on the money, with critics describing the film as dark, gritty, and really fucking cool. Yep, my sentiments exactly. I can't quite believe how good Joker is, read one reaction. It's a masterpiece, funny, dark, beautiful, full of rage, and really fucking cool. Joaquin Phoenix is masterful, and every shot is sublime. Another added, there will be before Joker, oh, I actually love this one, and there will be after Joker. I don't know if the world is ready for this movie, or maybe it is. It is gnarly, it is crazy, it is audacious, it doesn't hold back well. I can't believe it exists, but it does, and it's coming. Day four, another struggle in a 5am start, but today we have the highly anticipated Joker by Todd Phillips, Adults in the Room by Costa Garva, Citizen K by Alex Gibney, What's Network by Oliver Assis, whatever that did, what's, I don't even know what that's about. Phoenix is phenomenal, dark, gritty and fucking crazy. More on the lines of Mean Streets and Taxi Driver, it looks to be serving a masterclass, but Philip stumbles in, in the last hurdle uh, with the film not knowing if it wants to stand alone or be enticed by law. Absolute bollocks, you can ignore that, there's always one, isn't there? We fucking deserve rings of comedy rings of fire. It's a circus. It's a carnival. It's a mayhem. Phoenix brings us dancing through this social disease and it's a triumph. Lorenzo Socola. Ash on film. Joker is getting quite the buzz following its premiere at the Venice Film Festival with the first reactions describing it as a dark masterpiece with a powerful anchoring performance from Joaquin Phoenix. I am beyond thrilled. Now, this is my favourite reaction. Um, international film critic, and it's a long one, so let's read it, but it's glorious. It's an affectious and disturbing film that's equally um, meritocious and tragic. Phoenix's roaring, monstrous performance as the clown of crime is so immaculate, so maestro, it's a, prodig it's a pro prodigious accomplishment and marks the apex of his already superlative career. Agreed. They continue. Todd Phillips crafts an audacious and compelling portrait of a uh, disintegration of a man full of an eye, driven to unthinkable extremes with inspiration from classics like Taxi Driver, both featuring men whose mental instability drove them to ambiguous extremes. They continue. Phoenix evokes a sense of tragic, melancholic beauty in his transformation as the Joker, going beyond impersonation and disturbingly explodes on the screen in an act so flawless in timing and character 
perception, it's quite frankly one of the most impressive method acting feats. Absolutely. Bring, it, bring in the clowns. Joker will surprise the hell out of people. Dark, twisted, brutal origin story of the most recognised villain in pop culture. Joaquin Phoenix adds another iconic performance to his extraordinary career. Joker is still under embargo, but let me just say that we need more actors like Joaquin Phoenix. Joker's artistic director Cameron Bailey previously described the film as terrific, calling it really original take on a comic book movies. It's not based on an existing story. It has one of the greatest actors in modern cinema, Joaquin Phoenix, in the lead. And Robert De Niro is in it as well. One of the best actors that has ever lived. But it has an interesting tone and approach to it each year. It's set in the late 70s, early 80s, and it feels like it was made then. It's gritty in its look. It has references to Martin Scorsese filmmaking, and it feels like a cinematic achievement on a high level. Although it's working with very populist material, it has great ambition. So they're the reactions from what I can see, the first reactions. There's going to be many, many more reactions. Uh, these are mainly highbrow critics um, at the Venice Film Festival. So you will hear from your Grace Randolphs and your John Campers later. Look, there's going to be SJWs who just simply don't like this film. So here we go. Here's my reaction. Drum roll, please. The Joker movie is a very emotional experience for me, was a very emotional experience for me. Um, being someone who suffers and suffered with um, mental health disorder, this film speaks to me. Arthur Fleck reminds me of myself as a younger man, um, never feeling like I belonged, not having any friends, not feeling that my parents and my, sorry, family understood me. Watching this film really spoke to me on how people can be pushed so far, rejected, because they, they are not in the mainstream remit that society expects. Not married, no kids, no beautiful girlfriend, no, um, no house, no mortgage. We act a bit different to other people. And Joaquin, I think through his own um, mental instability, has found some great acting and the, the method, this guy is so method, the way he lost, he, he's, look, he's just an amazing, fascinating man. What I love about this man, he's come, he's come and became a member of DC. He's done a DC film. This is a critically accla acclaimed actor. This is an actor who could have easily said no, no matter how fucking great the script was and Todd Phillips being involved. Let's be honest, Todd Phillips' CV is a bit mixed, really. So there would be no reason for Joaquin to say, yeah, I want to work with you. But quite clearly, seeing this film, Todd Phillips is an extremely talented man. What Walter Hamada has done with this film, he has said to all of us, all audiences, this is not just to us DC people, uh, not just us in the bubble. He said, we are going to create a bunch of movies that are different from the last. We're going to have the DCEU. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some comic core tones. But then we've got this black label. And if it works out, we're going to give you more. And we're going to give you really, really different films. Whacking Phoenix is the Joker. As they said, it is brutal. It is violent. But you see a man who starts off as very shy, very um, sombre, very scared of the world outside of him. But slowly, slowly, he rises. He may not rise the way society want him to rise, but he becomes the Joker. He becomes the clown prince of crime. Now, I disagree with a lot of these reactions that say this is nothing like the comics. This is not like the Joker that we know from the comics. I would beg to differ. I would say he's more like the comic book Joker than I've ever seen in any animated film or TV show or in any film. He feels like the Joker to me. The only difference is with this Joker, we see his beginnings. We see how he begins. This is a very slow paced movie. I was talking this morning about the 37 second promo for um, Birds of Prey, the, man the emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Funny, fun, pacey, violent, very fast. This film is extremely different. I'm talking about a variety of films. And that's the point. This film is very slow. It's telling a story. 
that there is not one moment in this beautiful film where I feel bored, where I feel disinterested, where I feel I'm outside of the story of the film. I really believe in this character, Arthur Fleck. He shadows what I've gone through and what many people have gone through in their lives. As I say, not fitted in. He keeps on being attacked, beaten up, and in the end, he pushes back. But he pushes back in a really different fashion. He creates a revolution, an uprising for people like him who don't fit in. Am I saying it's right? Am I saying that everyone should do this? Of course I'm not. I'm saying this is a DC movie about one of the greatest DC characters we have. And they do something very real with it. Very real with it. The commentary on mental health is important. There's been some accusations that they leave the mental health commentary on the sidelines. I think that's the biggest lie a pundit or a blogger has ever said. Joaquin Phoenix's performance is beyond extraordinary. But this is a man who tops himself every time. This is a man who takes this art seriously. We have an icon of the acting profession playing one of our characters. Do not take that for granted. This is a special film that will be spoken about for the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives, we'll be talking about the Joker, like people were talking about Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight. But I'm sorry, this goes beyond that. It's, it's uncomparable, really, what they've achieved, what they've done. These reactions are just the tip of the iceberg. People will come. People will come and watch this movie from all around the movie consumer globe. People will come and watch this movie out of intrigue. People who have never watched Avengers Endgame or Iron Man or Man of Steel or Batman v Superman, they won't care what's come before. They'll know that Joaquin Phoenix is playing the Joker and they'll know his history. They'll know what this man's been through in his very real life and he's brought those experiences into this role. This is a very raw and unique written and directed film. There are inspirations from Mean Streets and Taxi Driver and the, and the King of Comedy, but they're not copying those films. Let's get this right. Basically, most of the origin MCU films are inspired by Superman the movie. This film is inspired by grittier, darker 80s movies that we grew up with. And that's the reason for that is a case of frustration with what we're seeing in Hollywood today. Generic blockbuster off the blockbuster. And Walter Hamada and Todd Phillips have said enough. Let's make something that matters. This is the eighth DC film since um, 2013. Right, so what have we got now? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So in six years, we've had eight films. Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, extremely different to Man of Steel. Suicide Squad, extremely different to Batman v Superman. Wonder Woman, extremely different to Suicide Squad. Justice League has major problems and issues in front and behind of the camera, but again, very different to the last film. Aquaman, very different to Justice League. Shazam, extremely different to the rest of them. Then all of a sudden we have the Joker movie, which is so different and so bold and so brave. And the whole world is taking notice. My fantasy, of course, is for this film today to win the Venice Film Festival. I don't believe that will happen. I believe people's bias towards comic book movies will hold it back. But no, no mistake, the people at this event love this film and want to vote it the winner. The problem is... They're biased, um, I, I'm looking for another word, but their biasedness against um, comic book films may stop that from happening. But if this film was to win the Venice Film Festival, it would be something extremely special. This film has moments of comedy, of hilarity in them, but not in the way you'll see in Justice League or Aquaman or any of the MCU films. The comedy is part of the drama. That's the best comedy. I love writers who have the talent not to squeeze comedy in there, but to let it flow as part of the drama. And this is what this film does. It is a masterpiece. It's perfection. It's filmmaking masterclass. There's no cheating. There's no CGI. This is pure, old-fashioned movie making at its very height. This film costs 55 to 60 million to make. 
The profit margins here are massive. The um, potential of multiple award nomination, uh, uh, nominations and um, awards and everything else are there. This film is truly a great movie. And when I say great movie, I don't mean like when you mean a great movie, when you see Spider-Man Far From Home and start getting a boner about it. I'm talking about a great movie. A great movie. One of those reactions said, I don't think the world is ready for it, or maybe it is ready for it. I don't think the world is ready for this. I think people are going to be shocked by this film and what they've seen. Something extremely special. A masterful actor and director and writer at work. You can't get a better combination when an actor and a creative are in perfect sync. This guy has been going places for years. He was offered to play um, Doctor Strange in the MCU. And of course, he was never going to play that character. He would have been amazing. Amazing. We all know that. But it was never going to happen. You know, he could no way work with Kevin Feige, a man who doesn't want to listen to other people's inputs. There's no way he would make those films. We got him. He's part of our history now. And that, my friends, is something extremely special. This film has a beautiful score. This film has beautiful music. This film's choreography is not what you would expect. It's not the kind of choreography and the color palettes that we're used to, but it's amazing. This film makes a big statement. Not every comic book movie has to be light and funny. Some comic book movies can be dark. We're making this dark movie. We don't care if you say it's too depressing. The statement is there. We've had enough. We made Batman v Superman. We're actually proud of it, but we can't come out as a studio and say we are proud of it because it was so divisive. Do you know what we're going to do? We're not going to go the opposite way. We're going to give you light and generic films within the DCEU, but in a very creative way, in a very typical New Line cinema way. But then with this black label, we're going to really let our creative juices flow. And that's beautiful. And that's unique. And it's a place Disney can't follow. Thanks very much, everyone. Don't forget to check me out at Twitter. Movies at Movies TV Mad. Let's continue the conversation. Please like, share and subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow for the movie and t the, the DC Movie TV Daily. And maybe I'll be back with a Birds of Prey, um, a teaser trailer, reaction. And that's if Warner Brothers release it today. And I'm quite sure they will. So I might, might see you later. Most probably, I'll see you tomorrow.